sometimes you want to flag or mark certain cells on your spreadsheet. It's called conditional formatting. You probably have used it, but I'm going to discuss only conditional formatting based on formulas. You select the range of cells you want to format conditionally. You do that from the Home tab, Conditional Formatting, and you get this menu. I will not discuss these options. They are the simple ones that you have probably used on your own and you don't need my help for that. I, I will discuss either to get a new rule or manage rules that you have already created. And once you choose new rule, it says these are your options. Always choose use a formula to determine which cells to format. Then here you type your formula, always starting with an equal sign, like you do in, in, in an Excel cell. Formulas are always equal sign, etc. Uh, the only problem in this box is that you don't get any help. So if you use functions that you are not familiar with, you will not be given any help on how to fill in that function. So test the function in a regular cell first, where you do get help, and then use it here. And then once you have set up your formula, if that formula turns true, you want a specific format. Determine what format you want, either the, 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 the font color or the fill color or borders, etc. Let's do that on this sheet. In this case, I highlighted all the cells that have formulas in it. So people know don't touch these cells because there is a formula in it. So what you do is you select all the cells with that marker, go to conditional formatting and put a formula in there that is based on the function is formula. That's a new function in Excel. And you always do this for the first cell in your selected range, in this case A1. The machine will automatically do that for A2, B1, B2 and all the cells on that sheet. So in this case it marked these cells because they have formulas in it. it it's very specific. If you would ever replace this cell with a number, then it will not be highlighted anymore. It will not be flagged or marked. And if you enter somewhere a formula, like the today function, it will automatically get that color. We do something similar on the next sheet. We highlight all these cells and we say if the value of cell B2 or in this case B3 is less than B2, then give it a red color. So we will see each time that the sales went downhill. And you do that for this whole range based on that formula. It will automatically go from B3 to B4, etc. So again, if you ever change this value into 100,000, it will not be marked anymore because it didn't go downhill in March for the north. In this case I try to find the median values in here. So I type in the conditional formatting formula equals D2. Remember you always start on the, in the first cell <coughs> of your range. If that D2 is the same as the median of D2 through D22, that is the entire range, then mark that cell. How, how do you get these string signs? Some people call them dollar signs, but they are string signs. You use the F4 key on your keyboard and it cycles from A1 to string sign A, string sign 1. That means you lock the column indicator and the row indicator. If you do F4 again, it goes into this thing. Let me show you here. If I type here equals a1 and I press F4 once, it locks row and column. I do it again, it locks only the row, now it locks only the column, 
and we are back to the original setting. So here d2 should not be locked at all, so it goes into d3, d4, but the median is always d2 for d29. If you want to check whether that is really correct, I'm going to sort that column, and these are the two median values. They are the values in the middle of the range. In this case, we highlight all the cells that are over average. In this case, I, I locked the column D, and the average is locked for D2 through D22. The, everything over the average is marked. To check it, just sort from A to Z, and you will see past this point everything is above average. On the next one, I wanted to put a marker, a line, a border, each time the analyst changes from COD into EJS, ETV, etc. It, it's clear that you have to sort by analyst. You have to do that in this case. If you want that for the whole range, you highlight everything. And remember, you are talking to C2 But you lock C to make sure that it doesn't do it for all the columns. The check. C2 is not the same as C1. C or D is not the same as analyst, etc. And we get this. A similar situation. We want to mark or flag social security numbers that are duplicates. In this case, we use the count if function equals count if in the range A2 through E2 through E19, and we count E2 and then E3 and then E4, etc. Each time that is greater than one, we will mark that cell. So if I would ever put this value somewhere here, it automatically gets marked. That is a duplicate. In the next situation, we want to mark the minimum value and the maximum value in column E. We use the OR function. OR E2, the first one in the range, equals the minimum value of all the column E values, or comma, E2 equals the maximum value of these two. Don't use the AND function, for this can never happen at the same time. So in this case, I have the min and the maximum value marked. If you sort them from A to Z, you will see here the lowest one and there the highest one. If you ever change a value somewhere into point 0.1, then that should automatically take over the minimum value marker. To find all the values between the 25th percent and the 75th percent percentile, we use an AND function. AND D2, the first cell, should be greater than the 25th percentile in the range D2 through D22, and at the same time D2 should be less than the 75 percent. And it will find all these values. It's clear again that if you sort them A to Z, that you will find that group here. This is between the 25th and the 75th percent. In this case we are checking whether both values in column D and E are above average. If only one of the two is above average, it will not be marked. An AND function based on D2 greater than the average in column D, and at the same time E2 greater than the average in all the values of column E. We measure how people responded in our research, their previous systolic blood pressure and the new one.
if they are up by more than 20 units we want to mark them in this case that is more than 20 units so we use the formula if the difference between D2 and C2 log column D log column C if that is greater than whatever the value is in G1 lock it in the row and the column indicator so if I change this value into 15 I get more people marked 10 5 something similar in the next one it's the same idea if the trend is downward the new systolic blood pressure is lower than the old one then I hide those figures I don't want to see them because they are not relevant for my research or whatever you are doing so if the difference between D2 and C2 is less than zero hide them how do you hide them you give them a font color that is the same as the background color the fill color okay so that is the high to downward trend figures so if this one would have been 140 then it's a downward figure it will automatically be hidden conditional formatting is great and it's even much better when you can use formulas sometimes it's hard to come up with the right formula as long as you know that you always start with an equal sign make sure that you are always starting in the first cell of the range you have selected and don't lock that cell and sometimes you have to lock columns you want to know more about these and similar issues I created for you a CD-ROM called Excel 2007 Expert it's, it's, it's a beautiful tool it has more than 1500 slides in module 1 you will find these issues module 2 module 3 conditional formatting is discussed in module 1 but you will get much more help on other issues you can find that CD-ROM at mrexcel.com or amazon.com and just type my name Gerard Verschuren and you will find all the CDs and books I created for you